So today is our launch day, our, our relaunch day, Maiden Voyage Part Dukes. <laughs> We still don't exactly know where we're going to go today, but that's how it is every day, but we couldn't be more excited. Yep, it's pretty early in the morning. I think it's going to be a hot one today. Yeah. Um, weather forecast is pretty hot and humid, but you know, that's the Midwest in the summertime. We could not be more excited. It's kickoff day! Yay! <laughs> Hey everyone. Welcome back to No Tears Frontiers Diaries. So it is the second day of our grand summer voyage to Alaska. Yes. Yesterday was a phenomenal day. It has been stressful getting ready and prepared. Of course, just like with every trip, um, there's always some hiccups at first, but we have been- It went fairly smooth. It went fairly smooth, but I think it is still stressful. I think that's fair to say. How are you doing today on our little uh, launch day, love? Well, I'm a little tired just because it's been somewhat stressful getting everything ready these past few days. And I've been so excited. It's been kind of hard to sleep, but besides that, I'm doing awesome. I know that once we get on the road and once I can see the road just stretch out for miles in front of me. We get out of Chicago, we get out of the city traffic, and it's just like the countryside, and I can see the horizons. I know I'm going to feel so much better. You know, our departure, once again, was not like a grand farewell amongst, you know, friends no, and family, but... But know. our friends and family did say goodbye, you know, yeah. all in their own time, and we were super busy there at the end. I had no time. <laughs> right. So, Tim. How has getting the bike prepared been going for you? Uh, I'm glad I have smarter friends than I do. Thank you, <laughs> Andy with Heavy Enduro. The wheel speed sensor is on, the ABS is on this side, so that means the tire is going up this way. So I'm going to put in my PDM that will run up to my auxiliary here, and then I got a fuel pump air because the gas tank was off and it freaked out and I took everything off so Aww. I did put on my bark busters which are good and I made it so the clearance you can see where the uh, the exhaust had been digging in so I might want to take that off bang it out but I think what I physically touched and have done which is sadly has to do with some of the electronic stuff I don't think I'm gonna fry my CPU and have the, the bike turn into a Burning fall of flame. <laughs> Burning fall of flame. Burning ball of flame. Burning, <laughs> yes. Today is our, our first day on the road and it will also be our first major test ride because yeah. all the other test rides we've done are, haven't been more than just a couple hours and there's only been two or three of them. So, uh, yeah. so nothing like figuring it out on the fly. <laughs> That's what we do best. That's what we do best. <laughs> I mean, it was very similar to the first time that we set off on a grand voyage because we had to quit our jobs. Yeah. We had to get rid of a lot of stuff, um, basically kind of get rid of all the things that we weren't using and uh, condense all of our belongings into one place for storage. Mm -hmm. as, Which isn't a lot. It, it's not a lot of stuff, no, yeah. but it is something and it's something you have to think about when you have no place to call home and you're completely nomadic. You know, what do you do with all of that? All right, we are pretty much ready. You can see that this room is all cleared out. So uh, we did have to figure that out and um, it all kind of came together at the end. You were working on the motorcycle quite yeah. a bit and uh, you, ha you got new tires on it, you got new suspension, uh, the big monoshock, because that was our biggest concern mm -hmm. with our motorcycle last time. Well, and I mean, and I'll say this in every time you bring up that I did stuff, but a big shout out with Andy with Heavy Enduro, yeah. you know, big shout out at Carl's for the suspension because that yes. was not, you know, that was not me. So a lot of the, uh, I did the electronics, which is you probably- did. Yeah, I put on the ruby lights, which are awesome, and yeah. you know, things tied together at the, at the last minute there, and we took off a day after we had originally proposed. 
<laughs> yeah, but. we were a little bit late, but that's okay, yeah. you know, all in due time. You have to be flexible with these things. And we headed off from Chicago in a general southwest direction to go towards Flagstaff, Arizona was our eventual destination for Overland Expo West. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in, so where I can find myself. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive. As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky I found my way, I found my way I was in the dark against it all But made it through the day Cause I found my way, I found my way In bad times, I know I'll be okay Cause I found my way say is southern Illinois gets very beautiful but our little cut across the, <laughs> you know, the state and it's my home state and so you know but like things things got a lot nicer once we crossed the Mississippi and the Missouri yes so part of the problem was getting out of Chicago that's always yeah. a problem so a lot of highways involved and then the other problem is that we stuck to the highway in order to cover some ground um, throughout Illinois if you get off of the main highways the interstates and you get onto the back roads of Illinois it can be really really beautiful but we were just highwaying it the whole way to the Mississippi but once we got to the Mississippi River we crossed it, which was a big achievement for us yeah. anyway. <laughs> the last time we tried to cross the Mississippi, uh, we got yeah. stuck about halfway across. Yeah, it was pretty disastrous. Um, the motorcycle stopped working. We had to be towed all the way to Colorado. Um, it was, yeah, it was a disaster. Yeah. We but can just is say that. A different motorcycle. Yes, and, and so far it's been really, it's been good. really good. The little <laughs> gas gauge is broken. The, yeah. On the dash, the gas gauge, that's, you know, like, it'll get stuck on full, but that's not the biggest deal. Remember, this is a new bike for us, but not a new motorcycle. This is a used bike, so even though it had very few miles on it, only yeah. 1,500 miles on it, there's been a couple of quirks. Besides the gas thing, we were able yeah. to cross the Mississippi without any problems whatsoever. The bike has been wonderful it's been running really smooth the suspension feels really yeah, really it does. good it sure does and even though it was like 95 degrees out in fact at some point in time the temperature gauge said 98 99 degrees yeah. <laughs> and super super humid but um, we got to our first campsite on this trip so far and um it was called Cuivre River Cuivre <laughs> I don't know French but uh yeah. Cuivre River um campground and it was lovely so we made it to what is the state park name Cleave 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 so cleavage Cleave I don't know what it means it's the name of the river ah. It's our rock almost.
just pulled up to our first campsite. Yay! Made it from Chicago down to uh, wherever we are. In Missouri. In Missouri. I think we're close to Hannibal, Missouri, close to the Mississippi River. There's a lake yeah. down there. We're at a nice little spot. It's gorgeous. Super sunny. It's a hot day though. It is a very hot day, so we're gonna go set up the tent and then we're gonna jump in that lake. a little beach there and we were so hot so the beach doesn't look that beautiful yeah up close it's not as uh hmm. romantic as one would assume from afar is it warm it's okay it's warm oh yeah i think it's warm and then it gets murky and then we can't tell if oh my is. god we were a little like not so eager to jump into the water just because it I think with all the spring rains, it had gotten really murky and muddy and yeah. filled with things and leaves and, and stuff. And I'm afraid of not leaves, but things. Things in the water. Mm. There's a lot of things in the water you can't see down. You know, it's definitely like murky Missouri yeah. pond. I think this is not the cleanest, most refreshing. It's just like putting air on my face. Really? Hot air. It's like the same thing. Oh yeah, it's the same temperature <laughs> as the outside air, yeah. which means it's 98 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't um, know how far south you got to go where, you know, gators start popping up right now. <laughs> Who knows? It feels like it should be now, but I know it's not. <laughs> yeah. But there's definitely water snakes out there. Yeah. And some of them can be quite poisonous. So um, I remember that from living in Arkansas. Missouri and Arkansas are neighbors. So mm -hmm. I would think that um, sometimes in that murky pond water, you do have to be a little careful. Yeah. But we decided, you know, we're so hot, we're going swimming anyway. This is, yep, where the cotton mouths live. What, 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 what? what? Leaves? leaves? Oh god. Who knows Just if leaves? they're up three. <laughs> Ooh! Yeah, this is this is where it gets gross. Yeah, good. And uh there's there were geese, those little baby geeselings. Oh so cute. Yeah, and uh there's these two ducks that that like introduced themselves. Right, they came right up to they us. They were awesome. I named them. What's your name? What's going on there? So I think we were on like a first name basis and so they're like, yeah, we can, we can go talk to Tim and Marissa. Yeah, and it was nice. It was nice. It was And then super Paul refreshing. and Stanley, the ducks. Paul and Stanley came they, by. They came by and... <laughs> they came right up to us. I don't know cool. why they were so... Because we're cool humans. I did. <laughs> they're cool ducks. And that's just how the world works. It was so nice camping there. We arrived yeah. quite late in the evening. And so by the time we were making dinner on our stove, it was already dark out. But it was such a perfect night. We left the tent without the rain fly oh, so that we could God. look up at the stars. Marissa the trees. always wants the rain fly on. Like we'll be in a <laughs> desert and she'd be like, no, no, rain fly. Uh -uh. Not always, but quite But frequently. like 99.9% .9 of the time. But it was so hot. Yeah. I was like, no, we have to sleep without the rain fly. There's not a cloud in the sky. Yeah. I slept the first night in the new tent. So um, hopefully tonight we're also going to sleep without the rain flight. There are clouds in the sky yeah, this time. We'll have it be on, on hand. Yeah, we'll, ha we'll have emergency it close reserves. by for emergencies. But um, we're going to try it again because it was it cooled off once the sun set and it was just a really, really pleasant night. I woke up to the sound of a woodpecker. You woke up an hour after I woke up to the sound of that same woodpecker. <laughs> he was making the rounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was just so, so excited for this day to come and all the days of just getting on the motorcycle and having nothing to worry about but finding accommodation, water and food, and the road ahead of us. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh.
been a while. My butt has, you know, yep. my, my butt, butt hurts. hurts. <laughs> you know, it was only, it was like a five hour day, which, you know, six hours when you add in when we stop and stuff. Today's ride was through Mark Twain's National Forest. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Missouri is beautiful, especially at this time of year. All the trees are flowering, mm -hmm. and as you ride by, you can smell it. Yeah, it's that it's real nice. smell of pollen, like sweet, sweet honey. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in new, somewhere I can find myself. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive. I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky I found my way And there's so many beautiful lakes and ponds just tucked in between the rolling hills, uh, horse farms yeah. and then dairy farms. I love passing all the farmland. Maybe when we, you know, we see horses now. You know, like Everybody used to have horses and only the rich people had cars. And now... <laughs> Not everybody has cars and only the rich people have horses, you know? That is so true. Conundrum. Conundrum. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are going to the first campsite that we ever went to on our original trip more than four years ago. Yeah. Like five years ago now. Yeah. 2017. And how we came upon this campsite is we originally wanted to camp at the first campsite that we had yeah. when we were going through the Americas four years ago, five years yep. ago now. It was the first campsite just heading straight west yeah. from Carbondale, Illinois. But this time we started from Chicago and so we had one pit stop over mm -hmm. that, that last night. And it looks like it's next to a lake as well. Really? Yeah. Huh. Which I don't recall. All I remember is that it was kind of like in the middle of nowhere, it felt. Yeah. But this is definitely where we stayed. Yeah. I think it's even, it's one of these two, but I think it was this one. It's definitely this one. Oh, ah, here it is. Here it is. And when we got there, it was, it was like, you know, I don't remember getting there, but I remember the campsite. And once I saw the yeah. campsite, I was like, exactly the tent was it. there, mm -hmm. the bike was there. Well, you want to check out the uh, the campground? Um, or, I like this. I just wanted to see if we could swim real quick. Yeah. Then, we, yeah, we, I saw on Google Maps when I zoomed out, there's a little lake down here. Yeah. And I said, well, let's go check out the lake before we set up the camp. Maybe we'll swim. Yeah, we were so early. We were like, well, swimming was very refreshing yesterday. It's yeah. pretty hot again, so let's go swim in the lake. We got down here, and it was gorgeous. Thank you. 
originally had camped four years ago, five years ago, was right up this mountainside, if you will. And we used uh, freecampsites.net to find it. Um, but I, I did notice, which I don't remember having noticed last time, was a lake was right by. And so I said, well, let's go check that out. And look at this view. Look at this. I'm gonna camp here. Yeah, this is. Uh... I mean, we came here and we were like, all right, look, there's a butterfly flying around. There's the sound of birds and water. So, yeah, we like reliving memories just as much as the next person, but also creating new ones. So, don't know if I'll go swimming in here because I'm scared of things. But, uh, yeah, it looks a little. It looks like that's for cotton mouse. Go, oh, okay. dragonflies mating. Oh, wow. Now, not necessarily swimmable. Yeah. Because it is still pretty full of logs and mud and grit and whatnot. There's not a proper swimming area here. Yeah. But, um, we're proper swimming area people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is swimmable technically. It's definitely, it's water. <laughs> it's, someone could swim. Somebody it. has, somebody will, but it's, <laughs> but not, it's us. not us. <laughs> So we're going to set up camp right now and then relax. Yes. <laughs> you, Tim, had a spider in the ear hole of your helmet and you put it on, or you were about to put it on, you just like looked in the ear hole and there was a spider right there. Can you imagine? Ooh, it's like my worst nightmare. And then in Botswana, um, I had a whole termite colony like start making a termite mound within my helmet. So I always cover my helmet with a bag. I've had scorpions in them. I've had spiders in them. I had a spider in my boots this morning, even with the bag. I mean, it just happens sometimes. Um, but we had a friend that had a snake in his boots. So I always like dump it before and shake it and really kind of pound the boot out before I put it on in the morning because yeah I'm not putting my foot in there and finding a scorpion or a snake there's no way <laughs> my iron butt again you yeah know, there'll be people out there like a five-hour day uh, but it hurt I mean we'd been in Chicago working yeah. not riding the motorcycle for so many months mm -hmm. so this was we'd had a couple test rides on the motorcycle before but this was the first time that we'd actually you know gone a distance and really rode it for a long time so yeah my butt hurts yep. um, my thighs and knees kind of hurt a little bit but everything else that's, is good you had one small problem on the uh, ride over yeah. here it's user error i'm an idiot <laughs> is there anything right there mm. 
Like I have, I like, I like having my visor open on my helmet as I ride, just because I do. And these new climb helmets we have are transitional. They're so cool. They're really awesome. But I still like just the, you know, the extra burst of fresh air. But and I have my sunglasses on as I'm doing it, so I'm not just, you know, playing Russian roulette with my <laughs> with my eyes versus nature. But a bee. <laughs> went through the visor and got stuck and then just started like, you know, stinging multiple times. And like, oh. I'm freaking out and I had to pull over and Marissa hold my glove and I'll get off real quick. Rah, 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 and I'm like, ah. Totally got stung. Oh. She's like, I don't see anything. And then like, I looked and I have like one mega pore. And I'm yeah, like, no, that's where it, it stung me. <laughs> my pore doesn't like, you know. Hmm? I don't see anything. It took just a couple minutes and it started yeah. swelling up. But and it went you can down. Kind of see it. It's red right there. Yeah, and it it hurt in a moment, but I'm I'm going to live, folks. I think <laughs> this isn't going to stop me. But are you going to ride with your visor down now? I'm going to ride with my visor down, wow. except for the last little. I'm it's not going to lock it. I'm going to just right. like leave it open. But I did take off my bottom chin strap thing that uh, is on the bottom of the 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 modular part because then a lot of air does oh, get in the there. Oh, the bottom chin thing. Yeah, yeah, to get more airflow in. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. No, so, and if anything gets, then I'll revise yeah. my, my <laughs> Something plan again. Something good. <laughs> like, climbed, like, thought about everything and put everything in its place, and I'm just, like, starting to, like, I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. Who needs this? Oh, a bee stung me. Oh, I'm going to put on the, the non-bee stinger device. That's why. Close your helmets, guys. This is just simple stuff. If I worked at Climb, I'd be so disappointed. Like, what an idiot. It's been three continents. With, you, uh, with a visor open. Yeah, you've never you're closed your visor. you all along the way. So tomorrow's journey. Oh, yeah, we're going to OKC. We're going to Oklahoma City to see the Dragoos again. Yeah. And from there, we are heading across Texas and New Mexico towards Arizona. Dun, 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 dun. So out of the humid forests and towards the desert is where we're headed. So, yeah. yeah, stay tuned. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully no more bees. No, my visor's <laughs> down. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. I think yesterday, as we were going through Illinois, it was, uh, what's it called? It was... Boring. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive. As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky I found my way